great race for us. Rob won, you know, he, he earned it, you know, that last five laps, uh, you know, gave him, a, gave him a chance to catch his breath. <laughs> and, so he, and I knew when the yellow flag came out, that was a chance for those guys to, you know, relax a little bit, catch a second win. I knew it was to benefit us, but, you know, a win, a second, a third, it's still good to me, you know, I'm just running that car to keep going. And, you know, of course, I want to win every weekend, but... I'll take a second. Well, a second in that race is, yeah, I mean, that pretty much is a win given the motor and the track conditions. Like you said, that is a, a track that benefited the open motors, um, you know, that, that could put the power in the ground being rough and stuff. I mean, the crate motors are, you know, awesome on the dry, slick, smooth tracks. What you did Saturday night with that car, nothing short of impressive, and I, I want to tell you, a great run, man. Well, I appreciate it. And, you know, it's just, it's a great car, and Dave is, you know, like I said, I was important enough for him to let me drive. But, you know, the setup was just happened to be real good on that car. You know, <clears throat> you know trade motor there, and, you know, people can say what they want. But, you know, it comes down to setup, and we just had that car dialed in, and it just worked out for us. So, you know, uh, uh, yeah, it was good running. I'm glad you hit on that. Yeah, I'm glad you hit on that setup works. I was going to bring that up. Let me ask you a question. How much did you free that car up to get it around that track like that on those conditions? <laughs> you know, it's funny because I was watching the modified race and I already made adjustments to the car and I was sitting in, in shading with the first car up, the second car up there and fell in the hole. So I, I walked over the modified race and I had my guys go grab the jack and I went to work on <laughs> it. <laughs> that's not how rough it was. I knew it was going to come back around because we started getting cooler, but I did lose my car up quite a bit and I kicked over those ruts because, you know, you just don't want to kill yourself out on that track like that. You can never get too free. And uh, I did... I just freed up quite a bit before I went out there. Well, yeah, so, yeah, we were watching that, and we were watching you in the early part of that race, and, and we're, we're, you know, you, you kind of checked out, had about a half a straightaway lead there in the early part, and we were under caution, and, and Adam Passmore and I were up in the Moxie Tower and kind of looked at each other, and I said, I wonder how much he freed that car up minutes before he rolled out, because I'll guarantee you those guys got underneath that race car and changed some stuff the way that thing was handling. Oh, yeah, you know, if you ever see me in the pits, I'm the, kind of, I'm the driver that gets underneath my car and clicks my shock block, you know, trying to being an edge, so uh, I'm always thinking in the car, out of the car. You know, when I got out of the heat race, me and Colin had that great race uh, in the heat race. I got out of the car and I had to sit there and look at it for a while and think about what I had to do. But constantly thinking, and, you know, changing the car because you know if you're not changing, you're not getting any better. And if you're not trying anything, you're not getting any faster. So that's the model I go by, and it's worked out for it. Well, you didn't have anything to lose. I mean, you nailed it. You, you hit the setup just right, and it worked out. I mean, heck of a run, you guys. I mean, watching you in Kronk battle with, with you and Maya, and then you had Weinbarger in there, and I think Shank showed you guys some colors there for a little bit. That was a great race um, for the fans, but what's it like to be on that track in those conditions, banging doors and trying to get the job done against those, you know, the bigger motors? Oh, it's tough. I mean, it just puts a lot of wear on you, and it's, but you got to be on it. I mean, you gotta, you gotta be on point. You can't really screw up. Uh, costly mistakes will, will cost you a lot of big time. You know, I've heard a few mistakes I made and I thought I was gonna get brake trained, but uh, it's really hard to hit your marks on the track like that. And there's such, there's such great drivers out there. You know, Colin, you know, uh, Brian, both my buddies, you know, I'm real close with them. Uh, well, uh, there's just so many, and you're gonna add Justin Duty this weekend. Um, and you know, this. Not everything's been on point yet. Colin has some bad luck. Justin hasn't been there. Brian's just been there out of income. Rob, the Rob, he's always back. And there's gonna, it's just going to pick up. So, you know, there's stuff about now. It's not going to, things are going to change. The competition level is going to go up. And I hope the fans are going to be excited for it because I think it's going to be a great show. Because uh, the young guys and uh, the experienced little guys that pass, like Colin Mayas, it's going to be a good show. You know, the thing you talk about, you, know, you talk about the fans and everything, is, you know, for the last two weeks, um, fans have been on their feet, you know, at Willamette Speedway to watch you guys. I had an opportunity last week to come down and watch you guys and, and talk to you down there in Victory Lane, uh, running Dave's car with the crate motor, beating those guys that have the open motors and stuff. And, and you on a fast, slick track with that crate motor is is intense. It's, it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch you out there. But... You hit the nail on the head. Is that you're you're bringing out the triple eleven? You're bringing the open motor car back out. If you're that fast in a crate car, imagine what you're going to be 
and a triple 11 open motor you got the the you know the top 10 out there you talk about some of these guys haven't hit their marks and stuff yet Next week, I almost kind of guarantee the weather stuff is supposed to be really, really good. The track, you know, there's not supposed to be much rain. The track is going to be slick. It's going to be a very, very fast, intense. I think it's going to be really good to see you out there back in an open motor battling with these guys in the top 10 because it's anybody's race. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I, you know, as much as I, everybody talks about the rain motor, I've got a lot of comments on Facebook asking if I'm going to get my first race motor back in and say, no. No, we'll be fine. I, I actually prefer the slick. Uh, just because I'm a big motor doesn't mean I like the track. I enjoy the slick. Uh, it makes it better for some of that. It comes down to set up. The stuff doesn't get torn up. So I'm looking forward to it. I hope it's like The last race we ran, I thought we have any slick and we weren't nice in Martin. So uh, I'm hoping for a slick track. I bet all you guys are to that last race. Man, uh, uh, you got to be a little sore after that. So there was some uh, some sweat beads there on your forehead. How tired were you when that race was over? Yeah, you guys were uh, all you guys got those cars that night were pretty uh pretty uh worn out and tired. I mean you uh, Rob, you saw Rob, he was sweating just as bad as you were and you know, I mean third place, you know, Brian Cronk, he had beads on his forehead and it was it was it was definitely a workout. But uh Joey you wanna say thanks for calling in. We're gonna start wrapping things up here on Northwest Dirt News. We're gonna see it with Lambert Speedway Saturday night. Shout out to some of your sponsors, man. Oh, yeah, I want to shout out to my new sponsor this weekend with my 111 car this year. I got Eastside Paving, all one of that sort of course, Dave Walters, for everything he's done for me. He's, uh, he's gone above and beyond for me so far this year and he's been doing great things for me the last couple of years. I can't thank him enough. Uh, Crocker's Cars came up for this year. Dining Force Graphics for all the beautiful stickers they gave me. Bodies by Steve-O. Uh, Steve Moore, he, he did a great job on the body between me and him. He's got a really good looking car. And I can't thank my family. First and foremost, my family, uh, my dad and my mom for everything they do for me, keep me racing. And uh, Monty Grayson, my talent plan that's going to be in this weekend is Monty's uh, doing everything he can to get it done and working hard. So uh, we're looking forward to it. Right on, man. We want to wish you the best of luck, and we'll see you at Willamette Speedway Saturday night for Ladies' Night. Sounds good. See you Saturday. Thanks for calling in, Joey. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Yep. Joey Tanner in the 111. Uh, good call, good call. Always fun to talk with him. He's uh, he's one of the, he's a fun interview. We'll say he's a fun interview. You know, not only is he fun interview. I mean, he's he's a great person to stuff talk to. You know, even on the side, um, he's got some great ideas all the time. You talk about a hard work kid, like he said. You know, he'd be you know sitting in a staging and he's sitting on the pole and he's out there watching you know the modifieds and turns right back around and tells this guy to go grab a jack because he's gonna loosen that car up. This kid is always <clears> thinking. You know, we talk about. Um, him you know, always doing research, always doing you know something um, like the X Factor car. You know, I mean, he took the X Factor program and made it his own, and and made that car work. And mm-hmm. I believe this week when he jumps back in that X Factor car, back in that Triple Eleven, I think he's gonna, I think he's gonna do really, really good. Yeah, he'll put, he'll strap the helmet on, and he'll be back to work. So, uh, you know, something else I wanted to kind of talk about too was, uh, you know, we talked about this, you know, early earlier on in the winter, but. Uh, Crocker's cars. I mean, talk about a team that's stepping up. You know, they put their name on Joey's car this right. year. And, you know, we've seen those guys do some cool stuff at the racetracks, giving away bikes for kids on random draws, you know, watch them give away seven or eight bikes one night. They stepped up this year to support the Supersport class. Brian Thompson makes the move from Modifieds to the Supersports. And they're part of that big $9,000 pot going on for that division that's going to spread the money through the field um and that's, so that, that's a cool deal yeah it's, it's really it's cool to see you know a local company it's not a big company you know they sell cars um it's a, it's it's an average size lot it's nothing extravagant um they have good quality cars there at crockers but they're doing enough to to help the racing there's some help supporting racing here in the northwest and they said hey look we, we want to step up and put our name on this this super sport division it's unique it's retro it's what the fans wanted you know the no tops wedge noses sideboards it, it's hardcore old-fashioned dirt the track old racing fashion, yeah. brian goes and buys a car and says i'm i'm doing that and <laughs> decides you know what hey 
let's put some money up on this deal. So they got together with Jerry and, and some other people there. And I think the James Gang was involved. And, and $9,000 went in the pot to, uh, to help support that class. So, you know, a shout-out to Crocker's Cars doing something like that and supporting guys like Joey. And you, you go out to Willamette, and, and you'll see Crocker's Cars at a lot of different areas of that racetrack on cars, banners. Yep. Uh, it, it's a cool deal. So, again, Brian Thompson, I want to say thanks for that. You know, he bought 10 kids. Uh, some some memberships last week yeah. in the kids club. Yeah. Just a good guy. You know, just likes to likes to have fun racing, and um, it, it's cool to see guys like that in the sport. You know, you think you know you think about it is that you know 20 years ago when you know when we were young and everything else, and 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 going to the racetracks and stuff and racing go karts or whatever, and we had so much um, fan appreciation, you know, sponsors, everything. I mean, it wasn't. I mean, it wasn't a weekly night that you didn't see a massive packed house. And it's getting like that again. It's, it's coming, coming back. back it's know? on the up and up. There's no doubt about it. The car counts are coming. The fans are there. The I mean, fans the, are there. they've yeah. been there, and it's like that, that's the big. That has been the biggest surprise for me. The first two weeks has been, Football. I won't say packed, but near capacity crowds. Uh, and that just goes to show you whatever's going on, whatever we're doing, not just Moxie, but, you know, Sunset, Willamette, uh, the sponsors, everything. People are talking. You're now. seeing the people come back to the track. We're starting to see, you know, the kids clubs are back. They're getting 130 mm-hmm. kids each track in two weeks. Full grandstand, sponsors on cars. It, it, it's, it's an awesome thing to see because the last couple of years, the last five, six years even, it hasn't been that way. Things right. have been a little... A little crushed, a little shaky, and now we're starting to They're see a found it a little bit. I mean, they've been there, but it wasn't as intense as it has been, you know. Now, right? You know? And like, and like we said, even said in the winter when you're doing interviews with drivers and stuff like that, something is in the air Damn. about, yeah, I'm mean, some sort of, you know, electricity. I mean, it's exciting, and I, I can't wait. Well, for and I week. think that's just a matter of everybody promoting the sport everybody you know uh, it's our listeners it's our fans that you know listen that's what it is it's those guys that are that are you know it's the it's the teams share and like all that stuff shares likes it's free you know i mean advertising isn't what it used to be and now you get on facebook or you get on twitter and and you take advantage of that whether you're a race car sponsor for you know one of these drivers or you're a racetrack owner or you know you're you're guys like moxie you know you you promote the sport uh, out of out of love and that's what we do and we want to see it come back and we'll do everything we can to do it um you know, then you got uh, you guys like Northwest Trucking Academy stepping up. Um, they've got that. some news. They've got some news coming out. I've got an inside scoop on something like that. I can't release that information yet, but you know they're the title sponsor. I know. I know. <laughs> they're, they're the title sponsor for our show, and we can't thank those guys enough because you know, I mean, it helps do things like support. Uh, you know. Equipment, the mics we use here in, in the studio, um, gas money back and forth from Vancouver for Josh to get here. Uh, you know, that's quite a drive. Josh, thank you, man. Um, <laughs> it's cool, but you know, it's just glad to see the people getting involved. involved. And, that, and that's and, the cool thing. And, and, I, and, and that, that's the beneficial for driving, you know, down here it, it, to the studio and then seeing everybody's, you know, friendly face and, and high five and everybody for a week that, you know, just came off, you know, it was it was cool, you know. Hey, congratulations, good job at Sunset, or hey, congratulations, mm-hmm. you know, good job at you know Willamette. I mean, the, everybody behind the scenes, you know, even though they're not on the mic or whatever, they're still with us. They're standing here. They they work hard hard every single day, you know, for us to put on this program, you know, Wednesday nights at six o'clock. Yeah, absolutely. And, so and remember, too, race fans, it's not it's not just <clears throat> drivers like Joey or team owners or anything like that that can call in. You as race fans, if you're a race fan, pick up the phone, call dial it five zero three nine nine one two eight three eight. Give us a call. Let's talk racing. You're part of the sport, whether you're a fan. I mean, you're part of the yeah. deal. You're part you of what we what do. A, uh, black flag means rolled up. Uh, well, whatever. Know. If you want to know what a. a, a why the track conditions turn slick if you're a, if you're an average fan and... that doesn't know what the word stagger means you're just talking about it it's not drinking give us a call we'll tell you what it means you know i mean so that stagger is after the races but That's during it. the races it's got a whole different you know whole different deal but uh you know once again northwest trucking academy stepping up sponsoring our show in 2016 um anybody looking for a career you know you're looking to do something different yeah you want to make a change you want to you want to set yourself on a different path check out northwest trucking academy on on, on Facebook, you can check them out on Google. Um, they're going to help you get a career. They're going to get you pointed the right way. Uh, it, it's four weeks. 
Yeah. You know, that gets you on a, on a path for just to drive an academy, you know, academy to get you. They will. They also have resources and stuff. They they, they help place you in a job. Them. I mean, they'll put you through their program. You graduate. You drive one of their trucks. You get certified. You hit the road. You you get paid to see the country. Right. If you want to do the long haul, they'll get you you know a position here locally. If you want to do local, um, it's a cool deal. You know, you got uh, Dave, the owner, and and, and old Bill, a couple of crazy cats. But uh, you know, they, they, just give them a call if you're looking to do something different. Put some